Hi folks, let's make the connecting rods for our LS3 V8 engine block, as well as a hand crank to turn the crankshaft and some feet to mount this up on a table. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. About a month ago, we machined this V8 engine block from scratch, super fun. And when we were done, Alex, one of our interns here said, hey, let's take it to the next step. Let's turn it into an engine that actually has connecting rods and pistons and a crankshaft. So let's start off with the connecting rods. So what is a connecting rod? When the fuel ignites, it creates that pressure that pushes that piston down. And when that piston is pushed down, the connecting rod is what pivots on that piston and helps push against the crankshaft, causing the crankshaft to rotate. And the output of that crankshaft is what you would hook up either to a drive axle or more likely to a transmission. But regardless, that's how we're capturing and outputting the power in the engine. Because this one is just a desktop model, it's not gonna actually work with fuel. However, this has been so much fun. We are working on some future designs where we may actually be able to use real fuel to create a real combustion engine. So stick around for that. But because it's not creating real horsepower here, we're able to change the connecting rod design. Instead of being a full bracket enclosure that permanently mounts on the crankshaft, we can just use this design and snap it over the crank. We'll machine the part in two operations. Op one will do the majority of the work on the top side and we'll be holding the part on the underside. Now that op one is done, the tricky part is how do we hold this relatively complex shape? It doesn't have any nice square bases that we could clamp into a vise. It's a relatively small part and it's not delicate, but it is delicate relative to the thousands of pounds of clamping pressure you have from a vise. The trick, let's make a quick fixture. A fixture like this is awesome because it's relatively easy to make. We can make it in one operation and we actually have to make quite a few of these connecting rods. So this is something that we can reuse to create a small batch operation. We've got a boss right here and that will serve to let us snap on the crank and then we can actually pivot that into place and use this existing bore to secure it down in two points. It's a good rule of thumb with fixturing. You need a minimum of two points of contact. Generally, I prefer to have three points of clamp down or contact, but here we've got two, but we've sort of got a third as well because we've got a good contact along the face of this fixture right here. Before we can use that fixture, we do have to flip the part over and quickly machine out a slightly larger bore. Location isn't very tight tolerance, and that's gonna let us fit that cap screw in there to hold it down. If you're new to machining, generally machining things isn't that difficult. It's holding on to them that can be a real pain in the butt. So fixtures are your friends and soft jaws are your friends. But even better than that, use Fusion 360 templates to make making these even easier. When I've got a fixture like this, I can right click, create from template, and I've got these pre-populated templates that are recipes that we've saved for specific machines like our Tormach 1100 or our 770. And I call them soft job, but the reality is they'll work on any type of fixture like this. And it's great because I can use an adaptive operation to get rid of most of the material 
a 2D contour to come in and clean up my precise geometry and then a chamfer to do deburring and edge breaks. And I don't have to recreate that effort each time and it makes making fixtures more fun, more accurate and more efficient. Card here to the NYC CNC page where pro members can download our tool libraries and the latest version of our cam templates. When you're trying a new cut or a new fixture, your ears are your friend. You wanna to listen to that cut and you can hear this Lakeshore three flute carbide end mill cutting through this aluminum, it sounds great. There's no chatter or vibration, which tells me both the fixture and our speeds and feeds are working great. Next up, machining the handle to turn the crank. The one problem with this handle is our crank is a square face. and We can't machine sharp square inside corners on our handle. So we're doing what I like to call Mickey Mouse corners. Other folks call them dog bones or dog bone fillets. By creating a drilled hole in just the right location, it means we're still going to be able to use an end mill to machine away the remaining amount and slide this handle over our square corner. Card here to the NYC CNC video where we talk about some of the tips, tricks, cat and cam strategies on how you can make those Mickey Mouse corners. Next up, let's machine these two feet. They serve two purposes here. They're going to let us display our engine on a tabletop, but they're also serving as the first and last crankshaft mounting bracket.
using a shear hog to remove most of that excess material now that we've flipped the part on up to. We also want to use the shear hog to get rid of that unsupported side material because the next thing we're going to do is come in with our superfly and just deck off that last little bit to give us a really nice finish. But we don't want to superfly across material that's what I call unsupported because what happens is it'll tear up and it'll rip your part out of your vise and probably damage your cutting tool or your superfly as well. An old machinist trick is to use the back edge of your jaw or even the back left side of your jaw as your X, Y, zero. And what that means is instead of having to set X, Y, and Z every time with our Heimer, you can push your part against the back left edge and all we've got to do is set our Z height as we switch between different parts. Last but not least, we're 3D printing the pistons and we're 3D printing the crankshaft. The pistons we 3D printed just because we could. On the next engine we make, we'll definitely machine the pistons. The crankshaft is a little trickier. Let me know if you have comments below on how we can machine a proper crankshaft. But here the Mark Forge did great. No problem printing a crankshaft with all this varying geometry. And one of the things that we really love about the Mark Forge, aside from the fact that it just works, is the support material tears off really easy and reliably. Hope you folks learned something. Hope you enjoyed. We've got more coming. We've got to machine the two head covers as well as some more laser cut and 3D printed parts. Take care, folks. See you next Wednesday. <laughs>